Hey YouTube, this is Trains and Destinations, and here I'm going to give a quick overview of this HP Pavilion gaming laptop. Now, I've had this laptop for probably the past month or so, and so I'm going to give my quick thoughts on this laptop. So, as far as the history of this laptop, I believe this came out around 2018 or 2019. I believe this specific one came out in 2019, and the Pavilion gaming laptop is essentially a low-cost gaming laptop from HP that competes against the likes of the Dell G3 and the Acer Nitro 5, mainly the Nitro 5. As you can see from the design, HP has went for a slightly subdued look. So as you can see, the top of the laptop is all black, except you have a green HP logo. If you look at the bottom of the laptop, you can see your massive intake vent for the cooling system. You can also see your rubber feet. And again, it's an all black, you know, matte black design on the whole laptop, you know, with the exception of that logo and the pavilion name right there. As you can see from the side of the laptop, it's actually, it is a bit thick, especially because this rubber foot comes out a lot. So this is a pretty thick laptop, but you know, it's what you would expect for a gaming laptop. And you can see in terms of ports, you only have a USB-A there. And then on this side, you have SD card, headphone jack, USB-C, Ethernet, another USB port, and an HDMI. Now, there are essentially two versions of this laptop. Uh, this version, as you can see, the hinge goes across almost the whole length of the laptop. And then there's another version of the Pavilion Gaming Laptop that only has a center hinge. Now, opening up the laptop, this is what it looks like. So as you can see, your keys are green. So this does not have RGB lighting, but instead it's a green setup. And honestly, it's a love it or hate it thing. I personally didn't like it. Um, I mean, it's cool when you're gaming, but especially when you're using this laptop for normal use, um, the green color plus this font makes it pretty hard to see the keyboard unless you have the backlight on, especially in darker lighting conditions. So it's not bad, but it's not the best either. You can also see that the trackpad is definitely on the small side here. So you can see there's, there's definitely some extra space where they could have put in a larger trackpad, but they didn't. This trackpad, at least this one, is also a bit loose, as you can see. Like, that's a click, and then that's just tapping it. So you can hear the trackpad is a little bit hollow. So the build quality of this is fine, but it's not, it's not amazing. Now, in terms of the specs of this laptop, you can see here that this is the AMD version. This one has an AMD Ryzen 5 3550H running at 2.1 gigahertz, along with an NVIDIA GTX 1050 graphics card. So as of 2020, the 1050 is definitely a little bit of an older card. It's not particularly that powerful, but does it get the job done? The answer is yes, it does get the job done. Um, especially for lower end games, especially uh, CSGO, Black Mesa, etc. You can easily max out the settings and you'll have no issues whatsoever. Um, so in addition to that, back to the specs, it has a 256 gigabyte SSD as well as 16 gigabytes of RAM. So the RAM is definitely nice having 16 gigs of RAM. Most of these have eight. I would say really the only downsides would be that storage. So an SSD, of course, is nice and fast, but if only 256 gigs of storage, that will limit um, how many games you can actually fit on this laptop. So there are configurations of this that have an SSD and a hard drive. Other configs have just a hard drive. So I'd probably go for one of those configs because, again, if only a 256 gig SSD, it kind of does limit what you can do with this thing. Now, in terms of other options, you can get this laptop with Intel processors. Um, you can also get it with an AMD Ryzen 7 processor. So there are a lot of ways you can configure this laptop. Now, again, this is the 2019 version of this laptop. In terms of price, you can find these for about five to six hundred dollars. The 2020 versions have just come out. And um, if you do have the extra money, I would get the 2020 version of this laptop because the 2020 version of this laptop has a 120 has 144 hertz display, whereas this is only 60 hertz. So the new one has a 144 hertz display, whereas this is only 60. Um, the new one has a larger trackpad, a slightly better build quality, although it's basically the same design. 
um, just with those few little improvements. And I would say that when it comes to gaming, again, it, the games that I've played on this, it played them perfectly well. Although with only a 60 hertz display, that made it a little iffy at times. You know, I did have a little bit of screen tearing issues. But other than that, no problem. And I'll say that in terms of gaming, the keys, they're very nice. So as you can see, they're loud. They have deep travel, pretty well stabilized. So for gaming, this keyboard is actually quite good. However, for normal use, it's not that good. As you can see though, the problem is that these keys are just big and they're not well spaced out. And so I had a lot of trouble typing on this keyboard, at least for me. I had a lot of trouble typing on it. I would um, hit keys I didn't want to hit because this is just a bit too cramped. Um, the keys are a little too large. And then this, the, this font and the green color doesn't help either. And while the laptop does have very thin bezels, which is a nice thing, the downside is that the palm rests are pretty small, so it's not the most comfortable surface as a result. As I turn it on here real quick, one thing I did like, though, is the speaker. So this does have a full front-facing speaker, and it's awesome. It's not, like, the best high... It's not the most high-quality sound, but it is loud, and so you can game on this without needing headphones. It'll work perfectly fine. Now, as the laptop turns on... This does have a 1080p display. However, this is a TN panel. This is not an IPS screen. And as a result, the colors are decent, but the viewing angles are not that nice. So head on, the display looks just fine, but especially as I tilt the, you know, my phone camera up and down, you can see the sort of color shifting in the display because again, this is not a IPS screen, it's a TN panel. And other than that, there really isn't much else to say about this uh, laptop. Hi there. You can hear the speakers. I'm Cortana, and I'm here to help. A little sign in here, a touch of Wi-Fi there, and we'll have your PC ready for all you plan to do. Use your voice. So as you can see, the speakers are very loud. Um, not a ton of bass, but they'll get the job done. They'll get the job done. And same thing with the display. I also say that another advantage for gaming is that the cooling solution in this is great. The fans are never too loud, and thanks to the good cooling system, this thing never really gets hot. I mean, I've done a lot of, like, I would do a full gaming session on this laptop, then I would, you know, uh, put it on my lap, and honestly, it was not that hot at all. It was actually pretty cool. So the cooling system in this laptop, it does a good job of keeping this thing on the cool side, but... Going to downsides though, the battery life in this is not good. I've only been getting at best four to five hours of battery life, which isn't bad, but the uh, Nitro 5 and the Dell G3 do get better battery life than this. Um, it does have a 50, 53, I believe 53 watt hour battery, but um, this AMD processor, it's not the most power efficient. So the battery life in this is not that good. And as you would expect, being a gaming laptop, this thing is pretty heavy. So, you know, what would I say in conclusion? I'd say that in my time of having this laptop, I did like it, kind of. For gaming, this thing is excellent. It's excellent for gaming. Um, it stays cool. The graphics and processor are good enough for most light titles. Uh, the keyboard is nice and responsive um, when you're doing a gaming session. The speakers are loud. So, for all that, it's fine. But... Downsides is that for just normal use, this laptop's not that good for normal use. This keyboard is not nice to type on at all. This is not a nice keyboard to type on. This trackpad, again, kind of loose and is very small. Battery life is not that good. Portability is not that good. And the build quality is only, it's fair. So if you want a laptop strictly for gaming, then I would recommend this laptop, provided that you have a secondary laptop that you could use for more normal usage. So if you were to have this in say a Chromebook or a little Windows netbook, then this would make sense. But if you want a laptop that you can use for gaming and you can use for normal use, I would not recommend this because for normal use, um, you know, this trackpad and the keyboard just both frustrated me. And the display's poor viewing angles also frustrated me. So, you know, if you want a laptop for all around use, I would not get this. But for just pure gaming, this will work. And it's cheap too. So uh, anyway, thank you for watching my review.